Hi guys, welcome to my kitchen. Um, today I'm a little bit short for time, so I'm making a very quick meal um, just to make sure that everyone can eat. It's actually quite late. I don't know if you can see. It's actually night time and there's um, people standing around waiting for their food, so I need to make sure that I can do this quickly. So I have been uh, in the mood for a Philly cheesesteak for quite a while. Um, and that's what I'm gonna make today. So I've got some bread over here. I've got peppers. I had the um, half a green pepper left over and uh, the uneven amount. And then the red pepper. I've got some sliced onions, some cheese. I've got beef. And then I'm going to be making a cheese sauce as well. So that's where the cheese comes in. Um, I've got some seasoning salt over here, but that's my favorite brand that I normally use. I'll just um, when I put the description down below, I'll just make sure to put the brand name because this is the one that I think works the best. And then I've got my canola oil that I'm going to be using to fry. So yeah, it's going to be quick. I'm actually against the clock. So I want to be able to knock this whole meal out in 30 minutes. So let's get to it. So first I'm going to start with the filling. So the filling is just some steak strips that I've made, some onion, and then some peppers. And then remember I spoke about my seasoning salt, I'm going to season the steak with the seasoning salt. And then I'm going to make the cheese sauce on the side. So let's start with that first. I've just put my gas heat on, ah, stove on. On medium I've just put it on medium I just want it to come up to temperature and then I'm going to start with the onion first so normally I would say do the veggies first take them out and then do the meat but remember I said we against the clock so we are just really going to cowboy style this one so I've got the onions and they are sliced right just gonna put them in I'm gonna do half a batch and then I'm going to do another half a batch because I've got two French rolls. But I also don't want to crowd my pan too much. I'm going to do half a batch so you can see how to do it. And then um, I think I'll do the next batch like lightning week. So as you can hear, we've got some heat going. And that automatically means that we're going to get the sizzling that you can hear and then um, we can keep going there so i'm gonna get started with the cheese sauce as well so i'm putting my stove on on high this time and i'm going to be putting in some butter i've got quite a bit but don't worry about the quantities of the ingredients i'll make sure that i put that for you in the description box below so I'm just going to let the butter go because I want the butter to be melted before I start making the white sauce which is um, essentially the base for the cheese sauce. And then while you've got your onions going, don't forget about them. So just keep going to them and making sure that everything is fine. And as you can hear, because I've got that medium heat, right, the crackly, I've got the kind of right the right kind of heat that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go in with the peppers. And at the same time my butter started to melt. I'm gonna take down my heat a little bit on the veggies, just a little bit. Probably not gonna make that much of a difference. But just to make sure that I've got control. So the next thing I'm going to put in into the pan is the meat, right? And um, you might have seen earlier when I put out the meat that it was actually quite shiny and red. Um, that's because I vel velveted it. Now, um, if you've seen um, my stir fry video, you'll know how to velvet your meat. If not, just go back to the video and watch it. I'll actually um, put a link up 
to the stir fry video and that way you can learn how to velvet your meat because that makes your meat so much softer so even when you stir fry it and when you eat it it's absolutely soft so you don't have to stress about you know big chunks of meat and more importantly you don't have to stress about buying expensive cuts of meat because normally if you're gonna make a steak roll you need to use actual steak right but I've just got tenderized steak and velveting it makes it just as soft as the expensive cuts so you can hear my butter is going, I'm just going to turn down the heat and then I'm going to go in with the flour. So what we want to do is we just want to cook off the flour just a little bit so you can get that floury taste off because that's what you're going to do. But the flour is also going to thicken our cheese sauce so be kind to the flour. I've got a whisk here because I'm not about to try anything risky, especially when I don't have a lot of time. So I'm just going to leave it a little bit to go. So that we can get rid of that flowery taste. Okay, and over here we are still good. So over here I just want the vegetables to just soften a little bit. I'm not cooking them right all the way through, just to soften a little bit. And the other thing that you must remember is, with the meat being velveted, it cuts the cooking time very, very short. I just need these to be taken away. Let's just do this quickly. So I can have some space to move around over here. That's going. Over here, we are also almost good. You can smell the flour, which means that it's going. Now I'm gonna go in with the milk. That sizzling actually means my heat is too high. I'm not very worried about it though. So I'm a bit of a cheat. The reason I use the whisk, or the reason we all use the whisk, is because we don't want the little lumps in your cheese sauce or in your sauce to begin with. But I'm a cheat. I mean, I use my whisk even when I make up. So do that too. It'll make it look like an absolute pro. I'm gonna go in with the meat over here. Once you've seen the velveting process that I use on the chicken stir fry uh, video, then you'll realize that there's also a trick to it to making sure that um, your meat doesn't taste like the baking soda, which involves the washing. And um, after you've done that, you need to just ensure that you actually try and paper, paper dry your meat if you can. With the chicken, it's not really a big issue, but with the beef or, you know, with the tougher meat, what you actually want to do is you can just leave it to just drip dry if you've got it in the colander in the sink or something, because that takes a bit longer uh, if you've got time. So if you've thought about it longer before than I did, then you can leave it to drip dry. But I just used a paper towel to just make sure that mine is is as dry as I need it to be. Just coming back to the sauce. So what you see with the roux that I'm making or with the white sauce is, you know, the more heat you get, the thicker the sauce gets, the easier and more manageable it gets. So I'm just going to dump the rest of my milk in. The plan was literally not to make so much sauce, but uh, more cheese sauce for everyone, right? Okay, so we are almost at the seasoning place for everyone. I've got my seasoning salt that I mentioned earlier. I'm just going to season my beef and the veggies. It looks generous, but once you taste this one that I'm using, you will really 
be sold on it. And then I'm also going to be seasoning my white sauce. Just a little bit, not a lot, because remember we are making cheese sauce. So we're going to be using cheddar. Cheese is a bit salty, so that's also going to give a little bit of flavor. I'm going to put a little bit of black pepper in the cheese sauce as well. So normally what I would do is I would put uh, red pepper flakes, but then it becomes a chili cheese steak. But, um, so I've got my kids eating, I've actually got my toddler eating today, so I'm not going to be putting chili flakes in there. So I'm just going to put in some uh, pepper to ensure, to ensure that at least we've got some kind of flavor, right? But the flavoring is not going to be a problem at all. The seasoning salt that I'm using is actually perfect for that, so I'm not worried. Okay, I'm just back to check on here and the white sauce is fully cooked so I'm just going to dump in the cheese. Just leave a little bit for the nibblers. Oh, this is going to be so good. Actually, I've just decided that the nibblers don't get anything because the nibblers are busy talking while I'm recording. <laughs> Okay, there we go. That's the cheese in. Ooh. That is amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the heat all the way down here because I've got the cheese in, as you can see. My sauce, oh yeah. Okay, I really need some chili in there. And over here, there we go. The meat is ready. It smells Meaties. amazing. I really wish that you could smell all of this. But I think we're ready. So I'm going to turn off. Turn off. And now I'm going to take all this away. And I'm going to get the French rolls. So I've got a roll that's our ready cut up. Now, let's do this. Take this away, and now the filling goes into the roll. So, if you're making for yourself, or not, there's not a lot of you in, in the house at the time, you can obviously use smaller rolls. But I actually insist on using the French roll because that way all I need to do is make just two of these babies and then everyone in the house can have a little or a lot or whatever you think this is. Whoa, this looks good. We eat in and then now I'm going in for the cheese sauce. Now I'm going to put this away. I need to find somewhere to put this. And that's not creative talk for anything. I just need help. And then I'm just going to put on the cheese sauce. Don't worry, I'm going to put a lot of cheese sauce because literally this is what the steak roll is about. So it's about the steak, yeah, we get that, but we are all just here for the cheese sauce. So there you go. That's the chili cheese steak. Why do I keep saying chili? I suppose I wish there was chili. That's a cheese steak, enough to feed 200 people which is probably what's going to happen right now. So here guys, this is my version of the Philly cheese steak that I have made in a very big French roll. And I'm sure you'll agree that was very quick to put together. Uh, the pièce de résistance, of course, is the cheese sauce that you can see dripping there at the bottom. But the big idea is to ensure that you are able to put food together very quickly and still have them tasting 
mighty fine if I can say so myself. And this is the end of the video. Please remember to like, to comment, and to subscribe so you and I can keep getting together. Thank you very much and bye!